Hi guys, so I thought I'd document this little technique or trick or bug or whatever you want to call it. Um, so let's say you've got an arm and you've made some kind of attachment or something over the top of it like this. So this is just some panel loops over the arm and then yeah, this kind of feature like that. But let's say you wanted this as its own uh, alpha, alpha map cut out texture type thing. So you go ahead and you bring it all into Marmoset Toolbag and you bake an alpha mask but you get projection issues uh, from the other side. So this is the low poly arm with UVs. I say low poly, it's pretty high poly but it's just a, a quick mesh that I've done and just whatever. But you can see how it's projected this information here and I think what actually happens is when it's baking uh, it searches out the way for where it can find so it finds all this high poly and if it doesn't find anything it basically the ray goes back the way and hits some other stuff at the back and projects that forward or something like that right something happens where it just gives you this false alpha map so we can see clearly what we need to what we're trying to get based on this okay and don't use uh, so don't use the alpha bake inside marmo set tool bag uh, the alpha mask at least it doesn't work perfectly for rounded stuff it will work fine for flat surfaces uh, maybe just anything that's that's not going to project backwards and hit something else if it doesn't find something <coughs> So yeah, just imagine the the rays going out from the low poly and it hits the high poly here, but in some cases it doesn't hit anything. I think what it does is just start, starts to search back the way, find something. Uh, either way, it creates these artifacts. So let's show you how to fix it. So what you do is make a duplicate of your low poly or something. And I'm just gonna, for the sake of argument, fill this with red and go to the uh, doesn't really matter I'm just gonna start making this smaller right so I'm just gonna smooth it all down so we're just nice good level uh, smoothing I'm gonna use a bit of weighted smoothing just to get it better and you can turn on the transparent to see uh, it doesn't really matter about the fingers it only really matters where the problems are because so what what the theory is behind it is that it's got something to project to if it doesn't find something on the outward uh, projection when it's doing the, the bake then it goes inwards and hits this instead right it just has to be inside uh, the mesh and I usually just call it like a blocker mesh or something like that okay you can pull it further past the ends here if you've got something at the end that you want to get projected just pull it past the ends right just don't clip any of that cool stuff that you've got there but at least do that and you'll have uh, this blocker mesh so I'm just going to re rename this to uh, blocker export that and bring it in Okay, so the blocker is going to sit with the high poly, right? And let's just uh, so we've got a low poly here. Uh, details our blocker. Oops, let's put that there. Okay, I think that's it. And what you want to do is give uh, the blocker a black material, a black uh, material, right? Just like that, and throw that on the blocker, and this will be white. And now we can um, see just in wireframe. Let's turn the wireframe off. Okay, so now we can do the whole projection thing again, but this time, uh, let me just turn that off because it's confusing me now. Right, and that. Let's just get rid of the big stuff. Right, so we've got our high poly arm 
high poly detail on the arm or low poly mesh uh, sitting here. You can see the cage for it, just making sure that covers everything. And our blocker, uh, our blocker is within the high poly group, right? So, uh, yeah, we should be good to go. So this is actually the low poly mesh. Let me just color code this as well. Right, so this green is our low poly, the white is the high poly details, and the black is the blocker. Right, and now we're gonna bake something different. We're gonna bake the albedo. So if you can't see albedo, it's actually in configure and it's down here. So it's gonna take the white from this and the black from that, and we end up with a black and white bake, and we use that as our mask. So I'm going to bump this up to 4K and this up to 64 and go for it. Click preview, hide the high poly and obviously it's gave us uh, this and it's colour tinted green. But it's given us this black and white texture which is what we need, it's given us our normal map. And now instead of the alpha we just choose the albedo and we've got exactly what we want. Just to turn that off there and play you can play with the alpha threshold if you want to do and yeah you can turn on two-sided rendering and yeah that will give you for the most part a few little defects there so you can actually see that the blocker has not done a good job here so if we look at this blocker mesh let me just duplicate that and bring it out you can see uh, let's hide the height. Okay, so you can see the blocker. This basically this ray casted back and found this information, right? This blocker didn't do great here. So what I'll do is go back into ZBrush. Uh, let's just turn on the transparency again and and fix that. So make these thicker. I mean, some stuff like that you could just paint out to be fair. But this isn't just in case you want to do everything at this level for a, you know, the sake of your workflow being a bit tidier. Because you don't want to have to paint everything out every single time you do a test bake. Okay. So you just want to try and cover anything like that. So this just needs some place to go. Okay, that should be good enough there. Right, I'm going to export the blocker again. And uh, let's try bake again. I mean, it should get rid of, there we go. It got rid of most of them. So the, you know, the only problem is this. So it's kind of like getting past and getting some information there. So the the index finger. Um, that's basically what's going on with that. Um, I think what Marmoset needs is an inner and outer cage distance where once it's gone as far out as it can, uh, it searches as far in as it can or whatever to find every, all that information that's in there and then just stops and doesn't give you any information. Uh, I think XNormal does this. Um, and sometimes you'll get like the inner and outer distance if you're doing like a normal uh, recast sort of uh, based projection like in Substance. But it's just the one thing that's miss missing. Now I have noticed that, let me just export this while I'm talking. Uh, I have noticed that Marmoset Toolbag does have a minimum offset and max offset and I think they might have got confused about this at some point because minimum offset just pushes the cage more doesn't really do anything unusual so I don't really know what they were thinking with that but this should be the inner cage is what I'm thinking like a, a negative direction and a positive direction for the cage so that it has those distances, but this just feels weird. 
Um, maybe somebody can shed some light on why that is, uh, if it's needed. I've not really figured that out, but anyway, let's just enable the high quality again and let's check the cage distance, make sure it goes far enough. And uh, let's do that, let's hide the high polys and bake again, get rid of this little defect, and there we go. So we've got this blocker in there doing the job, let's just hide the block blocker copy and this is looking nice okay some cases is a little bit thin now if you did want to simulate thickness like you didn't want all this mesh um, you could obviously just like have this proportion of the the polygons kept and cut them away right I've got a very dense low poly mesh in this case but if you did want to have something that was thick, then you can actually duplicate the low poly and use inflate. Now in 3ds Max, this is called push, and in Maya, I think you would extrude uh, or something. But anyway, you just want to like do a tiny inflate, so 0 0.01, and duplicate that mesh, and and then repeat that a few times, and every time you make a kind of copy of, let's, let's do point 0.1, oops, try and show you what I mean, so point 0.1, see how it inflated just a tiny bit, and then duplicate it again, and do point 0.1, so each time, that's actually slimmer, right, each time it's a little bit thicker, and if you've got that design on it, you can kind of stack it up in a way. Let me just export the visibles here. Which one? Yeah, that one, that one, that one. And export visible. I'm just going to call it stack because it's kind of like a stacking effect. Um, you can't use scale because scale pushes away from a center point, but uh, inflate actually pushes out, away each normal of uh, faces and you can kind of fake thickness if you get them really close and duplicate the mesh and it might work out cheaper than you actually m making all this by mesh right so let me just hide some stuff here uh, and import our stack Okay, and I'll throw the, uh, the that material onto this onto those. Uh, it was work if I do that. Yeah. So you see, it's these little kind of strips close together, right? But at a distance, it kind of fakes it being quite thick. So if I was to hide two of these, you see how thin it is. Well, like that, it's a bit thicker. So you can do something like that. Obviously, you just have your polys where you need them. Like I was talking about, you can cut away the rest to optimize it. But it's a good little way to fake the the thickness. It just depends how much you need it. You can also do uh, callback faces off. And let's see what looks with a bit of metalness. Yeah, so you can really see the the lines if you're up close to it and it's got a nice sort of effect but at a distance maybe the distance that you're going to see it from the camera you can stack these up so many times usually i do like maybe five or ten uh, depend on the load or something like that and you can load down to just one at a distance and uh it can be good for like signs and lettering and stuff like that as well so i've been using this little stacked card system for a while now and um, yeah, pretty decent for faking it with less polys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and if you find it useful, please like and subscribe if you like. And hopefully you learn some more tips. Catch you later. Bye.